hopefully the birds outside are not disturbing us too much but yeah i wanted to record this tutorial today anyway so i hope it will be helpful for you so some of the users of blocks templates have asked me how i created this carousel these thumbnails in bakery template if we go to preview you will see that we can click on these thumbnails under the carousel to navigate between the images and i will show you how it is structured here in this project and i will recreate something like this in another new project i will create from scratch so basically what it is uh, here you can see that we have the simple carousel and under the carousel we have row these four images each in the column for the carousel i have disabled the indicators even though they are kind of styled here and i have selected the next and previous buttons and i have disabled the visibility so we only see the image the slide image without these buttons without the indicators you can change to next slide until you click on these thumbnails there this is obviously your preference you can still leave the arrows or indicators but this is what i've done here okay so after i've done that i have added four slides to this carousel i gave this carousel the id of carousel 2 because i have another one on this website and then i will just select the images under the carousel and assign a couple of custom attributes to them the first one will be data target which will be linked to the name the id of the carousel as you remember this is the id we have of this carousel so once again we have the data target to the id of the carousel and we also have the uh, data slide 2 and the value is from 0 which will be the first image to 3 for the last one because we have 4 so it's not starting at 1 it starts at 0 so remember that and i will create the new project i will add the carousel you can style it how you want like i said i usually disable these buttons because i want users to navigate using the thumbnails under it and we will disable the autoplay and indicators after that let's add some images to our project three images and because this is actually square i think i will make it a little bit smaller so it is not huge image like that so first slide the second slide will be this and the third slide will be this one so let's make them smaller obviously because this is square image kind of uh, and the thumbnails will be under it or you can place them anywhere you want actually you can even place them next to this carousel let's actually try that or i have seen some people using this design so we can have the thumbnails on the left for example and then the carousel item the slide on the right so let's add the image here and there are a few ways we can obviously do that we can just add images like this for example just add a little bit of margin under them we can build the structure these columns and rows whatever but this is what i'm going to do now and let's check which one is first okay so let's add this one here this one here and this one will be here something like that obviously the like sizing is not perfect you can all do that on your own if you want some perfect customization but i just want to explain to you the actual technique i used to create this so let's select our carousel and i will change the id to something like elder and after that we will just go to thumbnails and add the two custom attributes data tar data target to elder don't forget to type the sharp because this is important part here and i will do the same for all others of course we need to add the second one data slide to zero for the first image
So after we edit all of that, we can go to preview. And now when we click on these images, as you can see, they will be switching between each other and it will even keep the sliding effect. If you want, of course, you can change the effect to fading. It will be something like that. But I think it's very useful if you have some kind of uh, gallery with thumbnails. You can use it for any other purpose. You can create maybe some carousel with testimonials and also use this. And yeah, I think it's very powerful when you use this technique. So I hope this was helpful. I'm going to create another tutorial. And if you haven't already subscribed and stay tuned for that, thank you for watching and I will talk to you in the next video.